investment agreement reform uh, might be leading us to. So, Lissy, you have the floor. Wonderful advice. Thank you. Um, let me start by thanking uh, the South Center, the organizers, for inviting me to be here with you today, but also actually for sending this book to me, because at some point, I think it was still winter, I received the book in my in-train, yeah, so <laughs> I had the benefit compared to you of, of actually like receiving it, and I had a great uh, pleasure and joy in reading it. And I think my contribution here today will be quite short and can be summarized in, in one sentence. Uh, congratulations for an incredibly useful book, really. And um, I will maybe explain a bit how I mean that by, by doing two things. On the one hand, saying this book is incredibly useful for what is in there. And secondly, this book is incredibly useful for how it can accompany us on this path, on this way of life. And I think this is already coming out quite strongly from the debate here that what we are really talking about here is the reform of the International Investment Agreements regime. And that is indeed a, a topic and area where UNCTAD has worked on, including in our flagship reports and in our meetings. So if we look at the topic of IIA reform, uh, even if the book is entitled Investment Treaties, uh, it's really about the reform. You outline the problem, you outline the sustainable development related problems, you take an industrial policy perspective, a gender perspective, you sometimes even almost take a textbook approach by explaining the different clauses. But then also you lead us to reading what countries are doing in, in terms of reform. And this sustainable development oriented IIA reform, that brings us right to the post-2020 post development agenda. And uh, to, to point out to you, one of the key UN documents in this regard is the Addis Ababa Action Agenda. That's the outcome document of the third United Nations Conference on Financing for Development. And what does it say there? I cite, the goal of protecting and encouraging investment should not affect our ability to pursue public policy objectives. We will endeavor to craft trade and investment agreements with appropriate safeguards so as to not constrain domestic policies and regulations in the public interest. And I think that's really the core of the debate here. To what extent do these international investment agreements constrain public policies? And what can we do to design better treaties in order to avoid that pitfall and in order to ensure that we use these agreements with a view to maximizing the benefits they can bring and minimizing risk. So what have we done in, in UNCTAD in, in this regard? And I think here I will already reply a bit to the question by posed. We work on IRA reform, on sustainable development oriented IRA reform across all our three pillars. That is research and we produce this uh, World Investment Report. Um, you might be familiar with the, the Green Book. Um, we uh, produce, uh, we, we organize meetings and uh, we do technical assistance. And in this regard, uh, we have done two products which I think uh, respond a bit in terms of saying where are the priorities, what could countries do. One of them is our policy framework, which we already launched in 2012, a policy framework for sustainable friendly, development friendly investment policies. And the more recent one is our roadmap for IRA reform. In fact, the roadmap for IRA reform we launched last June in our 2015 World Investment Report. And what we do there is we outline five areas of reform. And uh, let me list them to you a bit because I think they are instructive and, and interesting in terms of where the whole process is going. So the first area of IRA reform or objective IRA reform is preserving the right to regulate. And that's the key, preserving government's regulatory space. What uh, does this mean in terms of IIA reform? That means drafting better treaty clauses, MFN, FET, uh, uh, indirect expropriation, some exactly these type of elements you highlight in, in the book as well. And what we have done is we have come up with policy options for all of these clauses, indicating the pros and cons of these policy options, giving a toolkit for negotiators for countries to choose from. Second area of IIA reform is improving investment dispute settlement. And again, we've heard it several times here today, there are really fundamental questions with the way the system is working here today. And what we do in our roadmap is we highlight the pros and cons of the main approaches, investor state dispute settlement, state state dispute settlement, what are the pros and cons so that countries can make an informed choice about 
which tool to have and which tool not to have. And we then also give some new ideas and like propose uh, some new ideas which are now already making its way into the public debate, such as having an international investment court, for example. What is the third area of IIA reform? That's promoting and facilitating investment. And that's really fundamental also because in many of the international investment agreements, these issues are not being addressed. It brings us right to this fundamental question mentioned before, do these agreements actually help us attract investment? Yes or no? And we pose the questions, what can be done better to sort of like strengthen that dimension in IIA? The fourth area of IIA reform is ensuring responsible investment. That's, I find, the most difficult one. Why? Because here we are really talking about like what investors, what companies should do. And uh, as was mentioned before, these international investment agreements usually give rights to the investors and obligations on the countries. So in this fourth area of IIA reform, we are sort of like starting to, to scratch a bit on this paradigm and say like, maybe there should be something in these international investment agreements that ensures the investors behave responsibly. The fifth reform area or reform objective is ensuring systemic consistency, making the regime as such work. So I think those guys are some of the, the, the areas we picked, and I think many of them, all of them, are actually addressed in the book, and that's also one of the reasons why I think the book is, is, is fundamentally useful. Uh, the second point why I, I really enjoyed reading the book is the sharing of experience, and here again, uh, it very well matches with what Amtel is doing. When you chose the country experiences we read about, uh, we really read about some of the key cutting-edge approaches. And why is this important? Because in the end, the reform process is all about sharing experiences and learning from each other. And so here, let me reply, start replying a little bit to uh, another question that you posed to me before, Vice, namely, um, is it a more south-south or more south process? And if I'm just thinking about the sharing of experiences, ultimately, it might be very useful to also learn from the developed countries. And uh, what we see now, uh, for example, in Europe, in individual European Union member states, but also in a European Union regional approach, there is a big debate about IIA reform. And there is particularly a big debate about investor state dispute settlement, how, whether it should exist, how it should be shaped. And I think from these ideas, uh, one can learn, one can discuss them, maybe one can share them. So maybe so far saying that like the two things, what is in the book addressing IIA reform, and how the book does it in terms of like allowing us to learn from some of the key countries, uh, I found it incredibly useful. Uh, last point, uh, I think we can all use that book on our future path of IIA reform. And here, Martin, in his summary to his text, uh, put it very nicely. He sort of like wrote about the fact that the debate at the international level about the pros and cons between the supporters and, and the critics of the system uh, most likely will continue raging. And um, you basically then talk about uh, the way forward, and, and you talk about the way forward being the alternative that is a very well-balanced agreement, which recognizes the legitimate rights of foreign investors, but which it also recognizes that this cannot be excessive and that this has to be balanced. And you then note that it will take us some time to move from the present system to that future system. And uh, I couldn't agree more with that. It will take us a very long time. Uh, IIA reform, I'm, I'm very happy to say this, is there, it's not being questioned anymore, uh, it, it's starting, it's yielding first results, but uh, a lot remains ahead of us, and maybe a few pointers on what remains ahead of us, and where can we reform go. On the one hand, we have to ensure that IIA reform is comprehensive, and uh, that means not only looking at uh, future treaties and negotiating better future treaties, but also looking at what to do with the existing stock of and we've heard some very nice examples before uh, in, uh, If we look at the overall developments globally, so far, uh, this is not yet happening large scale, uh, but it's actually the most important area of reform in terms of dealing with the existing stock of more than 3,000 treaties. We have some nice examples of what is being done in modern treaties, but what we also need to do is looking at the existing stock of treaties. That will definitely uh, is a long way to go. Second thing here is uh, to work on that together. And um, I think that's very important because what we see in the existing IIA reform uh, activities, we see fragmentation, we see 
countries going off in one direction, other countries going off in another direction. Smaller countries that are usually taking the rules, taking the approaches from their negotiating partners, are being torn apart by them. And again, we'll have to follow multiple systems. So, what uh, is needed is uh, a certain uh, sharing of experiences, cooperation, maybe even a certain level of coordination uh, to sort of like make that whole IIA reform a bit less fragmented. I think South South engagement here is fundamental. It needs to be the crucial uh, first step to sort of like build a view, uh, have a sharing of experiences amongst the southern countries. But ultimately, it will be very important to also reach out to the developed countries only that way we can reform the system globally and uh, that is what is needed in this regard. So congratulations again and uh, I look forward to, to working with you uh, in this. Thank you, Lissy.